Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the United States Institute of Peace for the European Union's annual Common Security and Defense Policy Conference, one of the European Union's leading overseas activities to tell the story of European defense to an American audience. The event here is in partnership with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and we're honored to have with us uh, Spain's ambassador to the United States, Pedro Morales, uh, Spain's uh, former uh, defense minister. Uh, it's it's a real, been a real treat uh, talking to you, sir, and thank you very much for taking time to speak with us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, so <clears throat> let me um, take you uh, at, at the big strategic level. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, in almost every single conversation, both public and private, there's been discussion of what is perceived to be a, a, a growing transatlantic rift between the United States and some of its closest allies. We saw that recently at uh, the G7 meeting. Um, you know, we're seeing it over concerns about uh, a, a, what could be a widening trade war uh, that starts on steel and aluminum but then gets expanded to other parts. And then the concern how that affects the security relationship between America and some of its oldest and closest allies. Talk to us a little bit about your perspective are you concerned that the trade actions could then spread to security? And what's the way for both sides to get to a much more constructive place? Well, thank you very much. I think that, uh, that uh, the transatlantic bond and the transatlantic alliance and the transatlantic interests uh, are based, uh, uh, all of them, in the transatlantic values. And, uh, and uh, today, if we look at, the, at what uh, these transatlantic uh, links have uh, pr promoted and given the world, we are speaking about almost 60% of the GDP, of the world GDP. And uh, this is because we are uh, united. And uh, in the very moment we, we, we leave this union or we damage this union, uh, the, the, the addition of what is the GDP of the United States and Europe will not amount to 60%. They are 60%, it is 60% because we are united. And this is a principle that we should take uh, care because uh, it is a matter of fact, it is not a matter of opinion. And it's based on data, and not on, 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 the, on forecasts of what is going to happen or not. Going to the, to the military, that is exactly the same. We have an alliance which is NATO, NATO is based uh, is, a, is a political alliance, not a military alliance only. It is based in some principles that we are trying to defend our principles in our countries, but also providing other countries living within the way in which we are living, because we believe this is the best way that uh, humanity has found to leave more people in a better sta status all over the world. So it is not a matter of imposing, it is a matter of defending our countries, our principles, our interests, and our, our welfare, and trying to, to convince others that to live in this way could lead to a better position for themselves. This is the basis. If we, uh, and, and, and a third consideration, which I think is very important, the most important deterrence message that we can send to the people th who doesn't want ourselves uh, um, as allies or as a partners, or they are uh, f mm, fighting a principle or our interest, is the most important deterrence message is union. Union and union. It is not a tremendous capacity military on one side or, a, or a relative important in the other side, interest in the one side, another side. It is union. And the world today, we are in the, 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 the worst world of what we call the, the, the democratic world. Uh, we are uh, really facing problems, tremendous challenges all over the world. It is in Asia, it is in Africa, it is in Latin America. And so we should be uh, very clever, uh, generous, and intelligent to, uh, to send the message that we are united because we share uh, the most important part of what we have in common, which are the values, the interest, and a, 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 a future in, uh, in a commonality. And I understand that there are nuances to that, and I understand that we uh, perhaps should uh, con reconsider what are the, ba not the basis, but the structures that could 
today not reflect this principle of union, but uh, one thing is this and another thing is to bridge everything because this will lead to a start again in a moment where we do not have a lot of time in front of us to do things. The future is coming today at much more speed than it was coming 20 years ago. Today, the future is expanding 360 degrees and a tremendous, I repeat, a speed. So we should be very careful for what we can, uh, mm, we can uh, uh, develop but very careful above all for we can for what we can preserve and um, this is how i see and the reasons for i see that promoting the transatlantic bond is better than to destroying the transatlantic bond um are you are you concerned that uh, some of the pre president's rhetoric is going to make it harder to maintain that bond? Uh, and do you think that, for example, the trade actions are going to infect the security relationship, which has so far been still very strong? Well, I, I, have, I have to repeat, the uh, security interests and principles are the three pillars of our connection. If you destroy uh, or you damage one of them, the table will follow. And, uh, and uh, so we should, uh, we should, be fair, we should uh, be, uh, we should analyze in good faith what is damaging the interest of one each or, or, or the other, but uh, taking into consideration, I repeat, that many other important things could be damaged. And, uh, and therefore, and I think there is room for, for getting in, for consolidating this bond, doing the work we have to do, but not at the risk of destroying the bond. That is pure common sense, in my opinion. Um, you were uh, Spain's former defense uh, minister. Um, a lot of the conversation since 2014, uh, and particularly important for the president, is all NATO nations to be spending 2% of GDP on defense, but also 20% on investment. Um, that's a message also that uh, Defense Secretary Mattis has been delivering to each one of the alliance countries. I know it was discussed again recently at the, uh, at the NATO Defense Ministerial, which is paving the way for the summit uh, that we're going to have in July in Brussels. Um, you're the person who's actually fought these battles uh, at a very difficult time as the Spanish economy was uh, recovering to try to increase the amount of uh, defense spending for Spain. Um, talk to us about the nuances associated with the 2% number. Why is 2% important? And why is it, in some cases, not as important as some people want to make the case um, when they're saying that it's pretty much that the two percent is is imperative? Talk to us about the nuance associated okay. with that. The, the, the two percent is a is a is a figure that uh, that we uh, established in in Newport, in Cardiff, in the summit of in the NATO summit, and uh, there were three things. Not only two percent. There were first of all not to decrease the the budget in defense. Second. Uh, to grow the budget in the same level as the GDP was growing, and the third arriving to 2% in a reasonable period of time, which was established, as I remember, in 2020 or 2022. I cannot uh, re remember exactly what the, the, the date was. But I, I will tell you something. To arrive to 2%, it is, we have to build up something that permits us to arrive to 2%. And uh, whatever we do, whatever we do, which is damaging this uh, growing of the GDP, um, stabilizing our economy, uh, even if it is for uh, getting the 2%, will destroy this path, which is not decreasing, growing at the level of, of the GDP and arriving at 2%. This is something that we should bear in mind that for requesting a tremendous effort to the economies that arrive to 2% uh, should be uh, feasible, should be viable, because if not, will lead to exactly the other uh, way around. And uh, it is true that, uh, that uh, this could lead to a tremendous uh, clash in the, in, in, in the NATO, but uh, today I don't think that anybody in NATO is interested in destroying NATO. It's the only alliance, the most powerful alliance, sharing what we are sharing there. So mm, I think that uh, for the, for in the Spanish uh, example, no, I, uh, we were, during my time, 
trying to uh, maintain the, the level of investment in defense. But Spain, with, um, with the, the, the investment in defense we have, we are in any and all the NATO, the NATO operations abroad, in any and all the European operations abroad. We are in the coalition anti-ISIS. We are in Iraq. We are in Afghanistan, in Somalia fighting against the piracy in, in, in the Gulf of Aden and in, in this part. So we are doing, uh, we are committed with the, our responsibility in the world and we will continue committed to that. But for, for being able to do that, we cannot send to a population a political uh, message that, uh, that uh, will uh, provoke a reaction of our population uh, saying not only uh, not only not to the two percent, but not even what you have now. This is we should be realistic. We should be uh, we should be bold politically to tell our population that defense matters, but we should make it viable because if not, we will get exactly the the, the other result. And I have explained this here, and many people understand that. And we need a plan, of course, we need a plan because uh, it is unthinkable that, uh, first of all, this is not a contribution to NATO. The contribution to NATO is already there. We already pay, paid our quotas. It's our own uh, investment in defense. And we should, let's say the case of Spain, if we should to double our investment, we have to pass from, um, from 0 0.9 to uh, uh, our GDP to uh, uh, 1.8. 1 8 today in Spain is to increase in, in 12, trilli 12, uh, billion, 12 billion euros uh, our, our defense budget. We, you cannot pour money in, in the budget in defense if you don't have the structures able to, to swallow that in a reasonable and, and intelligent way. So we have to to have develop a plan, we are doing that. Uh, the, 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 the previous government, I suppose that this government as well, will confirm that our uh, commitment to, to Cardiff, and, uh, but let's do, it, let's do it in an intelligent way. Do not provoke a reaction that could go against that. Um, how do Spaniards feel when Spain is committing troops to so many operations around the world uh, where its soldiers are at risk and feel like they're being constantly criticized by the United States, which is a close ally, for not spending enough. How does that message go down with a Spanish audience? Well, uh, I, ha I can tell you that when I arrived to the Ministry of Defense, we approve operations abroad with the immense majority of the parliament which is uh, really an important thing in Spain, um, particularly uh, the socialists uh, uh, and uh, the, 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 the party in the government then, the Partido Popular, were backing with others uh, uh, these operations abroad. So this is, m means a tremendous change in the Spanish mentality because we didn't have uh, this idea of uh, our, our commitment with the, with the international and global security. This has changed completely and for the good, and for the good. But if we make a tremendous pressure and uh, mm, a tremendous uh, criticism to what we are doing, uh, probably, probably, it's very, very normal that, uh, that if we are doing such an effort and nobody recognizes that particularly, uh, and I think it is not the case because the United States and, and uh, the government of the United States recognizes, and, and we are working very closely from Afghanistan to the Gulf of Guinea together. But if we are continuously criticized, and I'm thinking in other type of things, the criticism, uh, I think that that it is it will be a little bit discouraging in the sense that this is not to avoid our compromise and commitment to, to the 2% and to increase the budget. It is that we should be clever enough to, uh, to be flexible and to be intelligent to permit that and to tell the truth. It is true that we have threats in front of us, common threats and we who should face this together. But it is true as well that uh, the, the strongest, the strongest 
has to be uh, has to understand the not so strongest in the way they are arriving to this position. Because if not, if the strongest one that all of them they are as strong as themselves as as, as it is, I mean, it is uh, this country spends four percent of the GDP of a GDP which is twenty two trillion dollars. Uh, I mean. But it, is, uh, it had, uh, and it has, in my opinion, a different role in the world that Spain has, even though the principles are the same. Commitment with the international stability, the global stability, yes. But you cannot, hmm, you cannot ask uh, to jump to that in, in, in such an immediate way. This is a, a lot. And the 20% in new, in new technologies, uh, we should also take into consideration that uh, that uh, the NATO is based in the United States, uh, European countries, uh, many of them in the European Union, and 22 for for, for me, and, and Canada. And and uh, I think that um, that all the situa the situations in. In, in the European Union, in all the countries, in Canada, they are not the same. They are not the same. And even in Europe, we should, when we say that uh, some Baltic country is spending 2%, we are patrolling the Baltic countries with our uh, air force. We are with, uh, we have deployed a battalion in the Baltic countries, in the, in, in the northeast of Europe. We are patrolling the Baltic Sea with our frigates. We are in the Mediterranean. So I mean, uh, one thing is 2%, and another thing is the real figure that you are spending. It's very different. Um, I can tell you that uh, we were uh, in the Baltic uh, recently, and I saw, we saw one of your F-100 frigates there. So I can uh, attest to the fact that the Spanish flag is, uh, is, is certainly participating in that mission. You know, you, you made an inter interesting, uh, Your Excellency, uh, differentiation where there are some who think that the NATO alliance is in sort of two pieces, uh, whether Iberia or the Mediterranean nations that don't see Russia as a challenge, and then the Baltic nations that don't as much, or the northern European nations that look at Russia as more of a challenge and not to the south. Give us sort of a more holistic view, because before, and, and at one point uh, in our discussion, you mentioned uh, not just China, but also Latin America as well as Russia. Give us sort of a holistic view of, a holistic perhaps Spanish view of all the complexities that are facing uh, the EU, the NATO alliance, uh, and also the transatlantic link about the security challenges that we should be paying attention to on both sides of the ocean. Well, I think that uh, I have intervened today in a panel about uh, the problems in Sahel and Maghreb. I think that uh, there are very many questions there, but Africa will have uh, one uh, billion more people in uh, 25 years. This is, well, this is a fact. And if they do not have a future there in Africa, they will, uh, uh, let, with a lot of legitimacy in my, under my point of view, to look for their lives wherever they can find a place where they can live. And that is very important to understand. And one of the places they're going to end up is, first places they'll end up is Spain. It's Spain. But it's Spain. Yeah, through Spain, it will be the rest of the countries of Europe. We are speaking about one billion people, not about one million, which would be a tremendous situation, one billion. So I think that, uh, that um, and, uh, and the world is very small today. The world is very small. And uh, so we should, uh, this is one type of thread that we have, which is based particularly in uh, the most uh, intelligent investment that you can do in, 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 in this life, which is employ generosity as a long-term investment. Because if not, you will face all the type of, of problems. So this is one thing. The second thing are countries that in this, in the, in this way, but in a different way, sorry, they are also expanding in the world. And uh, these countries are not precisely uh, mm, living under the same principles that we are. 
And uh, we, can, we see this in, in Africa, uh, we see this in Latin America, we see the investments in energy and, and food that I'm thinking about the situation of China. No? And uh, we have Russia. Uh, we have Russia, which is looking for um, a status that they lost uh, uh, when the, 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 the war fell. And, uh, and uh, for that reason, they are uh, employing some type of hybrid activities, utilizing the new uh, technologies and destabilizing what we have. And, uh, and so we should look at the 360 degrees because the reality of the threats are 360 degrees. And we have the, this problem of Venezuela and, and some type of, of, uh, of regimes that are exactly justifying themselves, accusing our democracies of being A, uh, a uh, enemies or B, a, f a failure system of living. Hmm? So we should be very careful with that. And for that uh, to, 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 to go, I mean, the way which I see that is that we should come again to the, the principle of deterrence. We should uh, be uh, proud of uh, the way of we live uh, and also uh, showing the world unity because these countries are trying to, to destroy our unity within Europe and uh, also in the transatlantic bond. And I will tell you, it is true that in we Europe have the North and the South. The, and, um, but I repeat, uh, Spain and other countries, we are in the South, but we are helping the North. And, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, I'm sure that they will uh, do the same if we have the problem in the South. But in the South, we have uh, terrorism, we have uh, irregular immigration, trafficking of human beings. We have uh, um, mm, instability in, in the region of the world growing faster. And, uh, and we have uh, the, the Middle East and that situation which is affecting us in a very... So we should be very uh, careful about deciding we are I understand the Baltic countries thinking my problem is Russia. The problem is Russia until they have a terrorist attack, as, as Russia has, by the way. So I think that, uh, again, I understand that uh, each country has to look for, for its own defense, but the best contribution for NATO and other type of alliances is that A, we are together, and B, we are able to defend ourselves without asking others to do this. And the third is the alliance working together. And for that reason, I strongly believe that a European Union more integrated uh, with the capacities of defense, and I am thinking in the, this famous 20%, it is more efficient not for the sake of living alone, but for the sake of contributing the NATO uh, with a more efficient tool as it is today the European defense, which is split between the, the countries. We should do, make an effort on that. Um, let me ask you, uh, we have about a minute. Let me ask you two quick uh, but important questions. First, is there a concern in your mind that the transatlantic rift will give Russia an opportunity to take advantage of this um, debate and discussion and division to try to provoke the alliance in some way, less than an invasion, but enough to give a challenge to NATO, which is what Putin has always tried to do, give a challenge that undermines the alliance and undermines the EU. Is that a concern of yours when you hear uh, a, a lot of very tough rhetoric um, uh, that, that seems to divide the alliance? Well, of course, uh, I think that, uh, that Russia, uh, when, when uh, the alliance was, uh, um, uh, was uh, um, got more countries in the east of Europe, this was bad for Russia. I mean, Russia uh, has had always a hinterland and uh, protecting their, their own uh, borders. So this situation was uh, uh, very, 
um, non uh, acceptable for them. They have wait enough time to uh, try to to, uh, and that's why the east of Europe is uh, uh, more linked with uh, with the United States in the defense of that border than the other part, and let's say the 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 old. Uh, European countries in the West. So, so, but I strongly believe that Russia is looking for what uh, were the the, the um, position of uh, internal defense in the world. I d Russia has the GDP a little bit more uh, higher than Italy. This is what we are speaking about. It is a nuclear power. It has uh, more than 100 million people, and uh, and. Uh, but the, the, the economic capacity of Russia, it is what it is. So, but uh, they are um, trying to uh, come back, uh, as uh, President Putin has stated in many occasions, the, the, the biggest disaster for Russia was the, the falling down of the Soviet Union. This is as, as, uh, his words. So I strongly believe that Russia is getting power, uh, weakening, their neighbors. That is a principle, it's not a Russian principle, it's a principle uh, f coming from Rome. Hmm? So weakening the your neighbors, divide, and with that means dividing your neighbor, it is good for me because I am the strongest power. If my neighbors are uh, very strong and you, uh, united and above all with a transatlantic bond, granting all this, then, so your question, yes, they are trying to weaken, and they are trying to weaken through the division. And let me ask you one last question. You talked about the importance in Spain's role in Latin America. Talk to us about why Spain's role in Latin America is important from a U.S. perspective. Well, I, have, I think I have, uh, we have a, um, a, a long-lasting uh, history of connections with Latin America. And in some way, um, there are some cultural links and, uh, and uh, and uh, political understanding and uh, mm, that could help because the culture is, is very important, the culture, even the, la the language is very important. I think that it can help to uh, perhaps uh, convey messages from one side to another and this other to the, to the previous one. And I think that uh, for that reason, Spain uh, could be uh, an important country there to, to send uh, Messages that are very important for these, uh, for the for for uh, United States, and you can imagine that uh, I am insisting in permanently that the second language that uh, the new generations of Americans, North Americans, should should learn is Spanish, because they could go from here, Washington, to and perhaps uh, even um, uh, more <laughs> in the north to Punta Arenas in Chile, speaking Spanish, doing business in Spanish, making relations in Spanish, helping in Spanish, and uh, being helped in, in Spanish. And that is something that it is uh, very important. And I am sure that your government understands this. And in this regard, we are cooperating closely with you uh, in tough measures, but also in uh, helping you to understand how uh, the, the Latin American countries could feel regarding this type or these other type of, of actions. And we are willing that uh, all these continents, the north and the south of America, you uh, live in a, in a peaceful and prosperous way. And this is what we want to contribute to. Uh, Spain's ambassador to the United States, Pedro Morenes. Thank Sir, you. thanks very, very much. It was a real pleasure and look forward to talking to you again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very good uh, advice and everybody will be eating very good food from the very top all the way to the bottom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs>